Hey there, folks. So I have the uh, new ammo lead kit for the Game Boy Color here. Um, this was sent to me by Retro Game Repair Shop. I'll have some links down in the description if you want to check this out. Uh, but long story short, this thing is a backlight kit for the Game Boy Color uh, that is using a BlackBerry Q10 OLED display. Um, which is a direct comparison contrast to the old hotness, which was the um, BlackBerry Q5 IPS display. Uh, but here's what you get all with this thing. You get the adapter PCB with the ribbon cable, two wires. Um, I'm guessing they give you a second because only one of them needs to be installed. Um, we've got this pad right here on the um, PCB labeled BAT, that needs to be connected up to the power switch to grant the kit enough power to run this screen. Um, but otherwise, I think that's about it. Uh, and then you get the screen, of course, with the laminated glass lens on top there. Uh, so this is an OLED panel. It looks like extracted from the cell phone itself and then custom laminated to a glass Game Boy Color lens. And you see there is a little... Uh, cut out down there at the bottom for the logo. So um, when we get this thing plugged in and turned on, it'll it'll illuminate the logo with the screen itself, and it, it'll be it, it'll be all good. Uh, so real quick, just like the um, Q5 before it, which we call those Q5 kits because well, guess what the screen's out of. Um, this one's the Q10. Uh, so the specs are pretty much the same, aside from the fact that it is a super AMOLED uh, 720 by 720 3.1 inch screen. Um, don't worry about any of the specs for the phone itself. We're not using any of that. Uh, though if you do want to look up reviews for this specific phone, the display quality is going to be pretty much the same. I mean, it's the exact same screen. Um, so I, I, I'm not expecting too much here, especially as someone who already has plenty of Q5s, but um, I don't know, it'll be nice to check out, see the difference. So normally I grab fresh Game Boys for this sort of thing, you know, that way you can see the mod process from, from scratch. But in this particular case, I, I've got these two old worn out Game Boys that, well, they work perfectly fine, but they have really old LCD kits in them and I just, I only have so many Game Boys, guys. I'm sorry, but I have to break the illusion here. <laughs> um, now, realistically, I could have just pulled this thing apart and thrown it in a shell with a stock screen and wouldn't have been able to tell the difference, but... This way I get to show the disassembly and be lazy all at the same time. It works out. Um, if you're looking at this, you're thinking, oh yeah, I have an old Game Boy with an old backlight kit in there. You know, you're you're thinking, hey, let's let's follow the same procedure. I don't I don't recommend this. Like functionally, the backlight kit that's in here doesn't really do much that this one doesn't do. Apologies for the uh, background symphony here. Oh, and as soon as I as soon as I acknowledge the cat, it goes quiet. Sounds about right. Uh, but yeah, anyway, old kit doesn't do too much um, that the new kit doesn't also do. But I've only got so many Game Boys, and it is more useful for me to not have multiples of an old kit and to have a uh, unique kit. So. So that's what we're doing here. I'm gonna get this torn down and then we're gonna go ahead and reshell it in a brand new shell here. Um, so with these kits in particular, I highly recommend buying a shell for this because, and I'll show you in just a minute. Ooh, this is one of the old funny playing ones. That makes sense. I will deal with that later. Can you believe that's what the old kits looked like? No. Anyway, um, set that aside. And I've got a brand new screen here. 
by brand new, I mean, totally original. All right, so now we can test it out, make sure everything's working. Um, of course, you want to start with a working Game Boy, because if you mod a non-working one and it still doesn't work, well, kind of set yourself up for failure there. Um, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about the shell in a little bit. Let's do some power usage testing, like I always do. side. Now of course this step is totally not necessary because obviously you're all starting with working Game Boys, right? You know, you're not just getting the thing straight off auction and tearing it down. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in, make sure my Game Boy is working as expected. And um, sorry, no fancy monitor today, we're just on the base power supply. The monitor itself is on the healing bench after I tried updating it and failed. <laughs> but um, at 2.4 volts, my console is powered up with the same game I always test with. Let me grab a membrane here. And in the same game I always test with, Pokemon Silver. Um, at 2.4 volts in the overworld, this console is pulling 67 to 70 milliamps, which is pretty much as expected. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, and it doesn't really help if I keep that all to myself, does it? Um, I want to know how much power this new backlight kit uses because I want to be able to estimate the battery life after we install it. So I have no idea what Nintendo quotes as the, the power usage numbers for this thing. Let's turn that off. Uh, but I have personally observed around 13 hours on some modified ones, so I, I expect that to be pretty consistent here. Um, but... I'll have to, uh, e either way, over 20 hours stock I've seen on modern batteries. Um, let me, let me talk through what I just did and turn on my soldering iron while I'm waiting. All right, so some of the other Q5 based kits come kind of pre-assembled. You don't have to do any of this nonsense. Um, but this one doesn't. You get the bare screen and then the, the PCB and you have to attach the screen to the PCB. But before I do so, first I'm going to attach the wire for um, power and then we'll attach the screen. Because if we do it in the other order, I will be soldering on top of the screen itself. I keep wanting to call it an LCD. It's not an LCD. Um, I don't want to solder on the back of this thing and, and give it any heat damage. And that's fascinating. Right here, I believe, this is the touchscreen controller that would have controlled the touchscreen in the original smartphone. So I'm guessing that's why they kept it, because it was already attached to the screens. Uh, but anyway, get this plugged in. We got to slip the connector through the hole in the PCB and then flip it over and attach it to this board. You want to be careful about applying pressure. Um, I don't think it's as important on the OLEDs as it is to the IPS screens, but let's, come on, let's get that lined up. There we go. Uh, I just went ahead and pinched the whole assembly. I don't really see any other way to do that with how this is positioned, um, but with the LCD models, doing something like that can kill the screen. Uh, so hopefully that's not the case with the OLED ones. I don't think it is. I also don't think this is going to work with it not soldered up, but that's, that's what we're going to test. That plugged in, got that connected. this in and yeah so 
I get the startup chime, but nothing else because this wire is not connected. And if I tap this wire on here, we get the screen. It comes on. Everything's working. So I can go ahead and get this soldered together. Turn that off. And chances are I am undoing and redoing this work. This right now is just for testing. I'm going to go ahead and get that soldered up to the middle pin labeled C on the power switch. And that should be it. Now I should be able to boot this up and it just works. Cool, cool, cool. So let's try with the game. All right. Now we're in the overworld, all this. The settings are the same, you know, same power supply, same Game Boy, same game. Uh, the only difference is now we're using the OLED screen instead of the original. And at 2.4 volts, this thing is pulling... Looks like 212 to 219 milliamps, which is a significant increase, but not all that unexpected. I have no idea what brightness level is that, though, so let's... Let's see if we can do anything. Uh, just touching it does nothing. I'm guessing we've got to do long press. Yep. And I see it's on brightness level two. Set it to brightness level one. See how that affects power. So at the minimum brightness, it seems to pull anywhere from 209, uh, 207 to 214 milliamps. And Total, there are 10 levels of brightness. At the highest brightness, it is pulling 249 to 256 milliamps. Um, that's not bad at all. I kind of expected way worse from something like this. Um, for context, some of the Q5 screens, I actually had to pull up my notes ahead of time. I um, if you go onto my website, which I have linked in the description, you know, it leads you to this page, and right down here there's an Excel spreadsheet hosted on Google Docs, which doesn't work worth a damn on iPad, uh, but it's it's an Excel spreadsheet, and it doesn't really work in Google Docs anyway, uh, so you can have to download it. But if you do, and instead of doing that, I decided to do the... Um, well, the easiest workaround known to man, which is literally just take a picture of my screen. <laughs> uh, you can see these four rows are the Q5 uh, entries in my uh, spreadsheet here. And the after measurements of all three of the mods that I bothered recording, they're all much higher than this. So this thing is pulling maximum 256 milliamps. Those ones were over 300, just I don't even know if that was the max brightness. I'd have to check the, the the notes right over here that are cut off. And yeah, either way, at at the, at at a maximum level, this is already more power efficient than the Q5. So I think that's a pretty good. Thing. That doesn't really help anyone trying to install this, but you know, we'll, baby steps. We'll get there. Um, we'll also go through the rest of the uh, options in just a moment. They should not be affecting any power usage. Um, that is, whether you have them on or off, It's this is still going to use the same amount of power. So don't, don't get too fussed over it. Um, anyway, let's set this aside. I think we're done with this for new. 
And let's take a look at the screen that I'm using, or the, the shell that I'm using. Um, so I am using a Funny Playing laminated Game Boy Color shell. Uh, so these are designed for Funny Playing's laminated Q5 kits, but like I mentioned, even though this is not a Q5, all of the specs and dimensions are pretty much the same, and thus it happens to be a perfect fit for one of these kits, which means you don't have to do any trimming as long as you buy one of Funny Playing's shells. Uh, so I have done exactly that. This specific one um, was for a FPGA GBC, but I'm just using a back from a regular Game Boy Color, and now suddenly it's a regular Game Boy Color shell. What do you know? I'll go ahead and link to this one down in the description if you're curious. I I think the design looks sick, and I've wanted to use it for something, so I'm making an excuse to do so today. Um, screws and such set aside. All right. So this is gonna be kind of weird. Um, I'm also using these buttons from Retro CNC because they're cool as heck. Um, I will link to these down in the description as well. I don't know that this specific finish is available. I'm pretty sure they uh, have normal shaped buttons instead of the concave ones. But um, concave ones are neat. They're mine. They're special. They're unique. But they just go together like any other buttons. I just like them. But the start and select are a little bit weird because they're rigid, so we have to cut the membrane down just to use them. I'm not going to cut that membrane, though. I'm going to cut this membrane. I'm just eyeballing the height. I'm gonna cut it a little bit longer and then I can cut it down further if need be. Measure once, cut twice, right? That's how that goes. Plug any of that stuff. So we can flip this bad boy up. Make sure we get that tucked down. That is tight enough that I don't think I can just install this loosely and come back. So I'm going to disconnect this entirely. So I can show you. Just pulling the uh, tape off now. That whole stupid maneuver was just to avoid desoldering that wire, which. I guess wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but whatever. Just seating that down. Plug this back in. All 
All right, now here, before I get this board flipped over and installed, I'll pay attention to my, my film here. It says, attach this insulating film to the metal surface on the back of the screen. The back of these screens aren't metal. It hasn't been since, well, the kits looked like this. This is the same, um, it's not the same shape film, but like this is the exact same text that's been on the film since they were shipping kits that looked like this. They, they just haven't edited the text is all, but it serves the same purpose. The entire point of this is to make sure that nothing on here shorts to nothing on here. Now, my Game Boy is already insulated. I already have um, insulation tape over the cartridge pins and the battery connector. Um, the battery connector is not necessary at all. These screens are not that long anymore, but this one's already insulated. I'm not going to bother peeling that tape up. The cartridge pins are a different story. You want to at least insulate these, though trimming them is a good idea too. Um, just flat um, flush cutters do you good. Works great. That's all you need. That's all this serves. That's all it does. Um, if you have your cart pins insulated, then you're good to go. And I have my cart pins insulated. Flip that around. Use the new screws, because why not? Alright, and because we're screwing metal into plastic and really don't need to grip that hard, I'm just bottoming out the screws and then backing them up a quarter turn. Make sure there's noise and... Ooh. Those are not feeling very good. Well, as long as they work, I'll clean it up later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip this middle screw. Uh, if you are building one of your own with a funny playing Game Boy Color shell, um, notice how in the funny playing Game Boy Color shell the battery compartment is flat, whereas on a stock Game Boy Color, uh, the battery compartment is kind of molded to fit two double A's. Um, the OEM shells make use of this space down here. Uh, where the shell curves up for that screw head. Funny playing shells kind of sort of almost make space, um, but also not really. And there is a little divot in the plastic here. Um, point is, skip that screw or drill that hole all the way through. Um, if you're not gonna skip that screw, just or if you're not gonna drill the hole out, just skip the screw and you don't need it. Um, oh, but you do need power switch and IR window. Well, I suppose you don't need, but probably want. Really? Did I put it away? Nope, of course not. Bear with me. I'm I'm a little bit of an idiot. And I lost my screwdriver. Well, on that great disappointment. start screwing this together. Um, anyway, I guess while I'm assembling this, I, I've i seen a lot of people 
really hyped over this thing and I really hope it lives up to the hype. I'm just cautiously optimistic um, for several reasons. First, I remember the last new backlight kit this company put out. In fact, I recall doing a stream on it. And then I recall the brightness controls being totally, totally busted. And, um, <laughs> oops, we'll get it next time, I guess. And so I'm hoping there's no egregious errors like that in this kit. Um, I've seen at least one other YouTube content creator decided to rush their video out and they got a video out before me, which is bizarre, but I guess it happens. Um, they didn't notice any egregious issues with their kit, so I'm hoping that's not the case here. I did notice that specifically there is still no color correction, um, which is something that would have been especially nice with an OLED, but all right, sure. Um, back up all my screws, quarter turn again, just to make sure they're not overly tightened. And I think we're good to go. I should remove this plastic. Because now I can't grip the edge. <laughs> there was a tab on it. That's why. Uh, batteries. There's batteries in this one. So good. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. I should have paid closer attention to that. I, I eyeballed the fitment for that membrane and cut off not enough, thinking, oh yeah, I'll come back and fix it. And then, yeah, it's, it's too tight. I should have fixed that before I had to take the whole thing apart again, but doesn't matter. Right? This is the part that matters. All right, so let's go over the settings now. Um, so to bring up this OSD, there are no button controls. There's no more um, weird, stranded, all alone touch sensor hanging off in the middle of nowhere up on the top of your device somewhere. Um, no, you just press and hold your finger to the area where the OSD is supposed to appear and it triggers the OSD. To get it to go away, allegedly you can do the same thing, though that's not working for me. Alternatively, you just leave it alone and it'll go away on its own. After a few seconds, maybe. Yeah, there it goes. Um, touching and holding in other places of the screen don't do anything as far as I'm aware. Um, there's no real gesture support or anything on the screen that I know of, with one exception. Uh, that exception is when you get the OSD up, you can swipe up and swipe down to scroll through it. Neat little touch. Not the first kit with this feature, but certainly the first kit with this feature and an OSD. Uh, but anyway, let's go through the options here. You have the standard brightness controls, um, there are 10 steps. Looks like the only way to trigger through these steps is to do it through the OSD itself. So there's no like quick settings or, or um, quick shortcut that some of the other kits have. Kill those lights so you can see a little bit better. Pull that back up. Next up, we have some color modes. I yeah, still don't really know what the point of these is. Um, the first mode is, of course, 
you know, standard one-to-one -one Game Boy Color says this, this pixel's pink, screen draws it as pink. Everybody happy. Uh, color mode two converts everything to monochrome, grayscale, whatever, black and white. Um, I think that could be neat on some specific games on the Game Boy Color that don't actually support the Game Boy Color's native palette controls because they're technically Game Boy Color games. But beyond that, I mean, I, I personally generally prefer to just leave it in color. Uh, and then the rest of them, rest of the color modes, as it were, are effectively color filters that get applied on top. Um, you know, they, they say it's so you can make your, your screen cool or warm or whatever. It's not exactly a desaturation palette, so if you're hoping for something like that, that's still not here. Um, next up, we have pixel effects. So the first option, one, is off. Option number two looks like we have vertical pixel grids running down the screen, and I will, of course, throw this under the microscope and take some pictures, and I'll link it down in the description. Um, come on. Next up is, instead of vertical, now we have horizontal lines going across the screen to try and simulate a pixel grid. And then four is both vertical and horizontal, and that's it. Um, using these will not affect the power usage per se, but what they will do is they will lower the effective brightness of the screen, because instead of using... Uh, so, so this is using a 4 to 1 pixel scale integer ratio. Um, a 4 to 1 integer ratio for pixel scaling. Woo! Words. Got them all out, just wrong order. <laughs> uh, so the original Game Boy Color is um, like 160 by 144 or something like that. And so this screen is scaling it to 4x that. So for each original pixel that the Game Boy Color outputs, you know, 160 by 144 is not a lot. This screen is using four pixels in its own matrix to represent one pixel of the original Game Boy Color screen. So when you have the um, pixel grid emulation options up, instead of doing a um, four to one ratio, you're doing a three to one ratio. So three pixels of this screen make up one pixel of the original Game Boy Color's display. Well, three to one means you're using nine pixels to represent one, whereas four to one means you're using 16 pixels to represent one. It's not exactly, you know, a, a, a doubling effect. You know, you're not exactly using twice as many pixels to display, but it is damn close and it is very evident by the actual brightness, the effective brightness of the screen. Um, so yes, like I said, running the pixel grid won't increase or, you know, decrease the battery life, but it will mean that you have to brighten up the screen to compensate and that will decrease the battery life. I prefer to keep it off, but if you want it on, you know who you are. Um, I think Funny Playing's implementations were a little bit better. They give you a few different options rather than the black lines on or off, horizontal or vertical. Um, and then on the second page, we have three options here. FRM, I'll get to that more in a minute. H position and V position. Uh, H position and V position just allow you to adjust the position of the display underneath the lens in case something is misaligned. See, I can adjust it to the left. I can adjust it to the right. See it moving a little bit if I hit the right spot. Um, and of course you could do the same thing up and down. But mine was pretty good out of the box. I don't think I need to adjust that. And then on the last page, the third page, we have logo color, which, ah, there we go. You can cycle through the different options there. And it looks like the, the touch area for the 
touch screen is quite small, so using the pad of my thumb doesn't seem to be working very well. <laughs> cycle through all the colors for that. I have no idea what I want to use for this shell. But I'm thinking of that, that bright white option. The first one is probably good. And then last option is reset, yes or no. I don't know what no does. But yes, should do a factory reset on the, the screen itself. Uh, so what that factory reset is going to do, it's going to set it back to the default brightness of 2, color mode 1, pixel effect 1, um, FRM off, H position 37, V position 6, and then logo color off. Um, the reason they include that factory reset is because for some of the older kits, it was possible and very easy to corrupt the settings and then the screen didn't work at all, which was silly, but you know, it's nice that they include it. Hopefully we don't need it, but it is what it is. Otherwise from there, I think we're good to go to test it out. So let me grab Zass and let's talk about the FRM option. Oh good, it actually is Zass, except I can't start the game. There we go. I should have fixed my buttons. <laughs> All right, good enough. You can pause it. So I don't know how well this is coming out on camera. I think my phone is doing me favors and it's smoothing out the flickering. But if you're watching this at 60 FPS, um, you should see the screen flickering quite a bit. Um, that is what it actually looks like in person. There's also this like rolling shutter effect. Uh, it's going this slow. You know, it's not going very quick. That is not visible in person. That is an artifact of filming this screen. I don't know what it is about OLED screens. They just, they do that uh, when you film them. Um, kind of like CRTs, interesting. Uh, anyway, but the flickering is coming out in person and uh, FRM should deal with that. So if I come in here and turn this on, Look at that, the flickering stops immediately. So what this is, what it does, um, this is basically blending the frames together. So you have um, an object on screen that is flickering on and off, and then the screen is taking frame one and two, or 59, 60, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and even in an odd frame, it's taking them, looking at the difference between the two, averaging them together, and then displaying that averaged out frame. So what this means is effectively, we are adding at least a little bit of a buffer somewhere into the screen uh, display chain. Um, I don't know, I have not measured the response times. I don't know how this affects anything. But in theory, by adding that little bit of a buffer, we are slightly increasing the lag. In theory, I don't know how that actually plays out. It's entirely possible that the display chain, you know, follows the same exact number of steps, whether FRM is on or off. So it's not actually adding lag. Just the fact that they added the setting entirely added lag. And then, you know, you either choose with it on or off at this point. I, I, I don't know. Hypotheticals. Um, in theory, this is adding a sl small amount of lag. In practice, I have not noticed anything. I have not noticed any issues whatsoever. It's totally playable. It's fine. In most cases, you probably want it on, especially if you're playing a game like Zass. Um, I need to trim my membranes down. But you notice, with it on, now the game becomes totally playable without uh, a whole bunch of flickering of the screen. So what's going on is, originally, when the Game Boy first came out back in 1989 or thereabouts, um, there was no way for the console to display transparency on screen. It just, the technology wasn't there at the time. It was, it was an old device and that's just simply how they worked. Additionally, the screens had a horrendous amount of ghosting. Um, the pixel response times just kind of sucked. And so when you flickered something on the screen, it just, it, it kind of lingered for a little bit longer than you might expect on a more modern device. You can't see where the damn, can you? 
Let me try to turn the brightness down a little. Maybe, there we go. Is that better? No, it's still terrible. Um, anyway, so developers found out about this. They decided to make use of a bug with the, the screen's display interface and treat it as a feature when combined with the fact that the console couldn't display anything transparent. So they just flicker something on really fast. In this specific case, the background of my game, um, and the, the terrible pixel response times of the screen would make sense of that pea soup and give you a nice transparency effect. Well, on modern screens that have significantly better response times, you just see the actual flickering instead of um, the intended effect. Yeah? I think it looks pretty good. Um, Zass is my go-to game for checking that just because it is the most egregious, but it is certainly not the only game that does that. So I'll grab my Easy Flash here. Ugh. I guess not because my select button is stuck down. I'll have to fix that. Ugh. Let me just power through it, please. Wait, I don't need to go down that far. There we go, we got it, maybe. Okay. <laughs> um, other good example for uh, transparency would be Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Um, whoops, that was the wrong one because my start button stuck. Oh, it's killing me. It's such an easy thing to fix too and I'm just not gonna fix it. I refuse. I'm going to power through it and then I'll fix it after the video, I promise. Ta da! Nope, stop it! Oh my god. Ta da! Look at the chain. See, that is the most common example, I think. Um, this chain, I don't think my phone can focus on that, so I'm that close. Interesting. Okay, uh, so be it. Uh, this chain is transparent, so what happens with FRM off is every other chain link is alternating on a different frame. Um, the result here is a nice transparency, but the actual cause, you know, the reason it's doing that in the first place, is apparently to try and save memory um, because there is a sprite limit. The console can only have so many sprites on screen at the same time, and each one of those links counts as a sprite. So by flickering them off and on alternatively, you can save on that kind of memory. And uh, I don't know, I think it's pretty neat. But there's another example of transparency. Um, beyond that, I don't think there's much else to discuss. Um, the response times are fantastic, the color accuracy is fantastic, I mean, compared to other backlight kits, compared to how this is supposed to look, it's, you know, things are, things are still a little bit off, but, um, it is what it is. Um, so on that note, the original Game Boy Color screens, of course, there was no lighting in there, uh, it just worked by reflecting any passive light back at you. Um, in this case, it would be my ceiling light that it's reflecting. Uh, so because of this screen technology, because things could appear quite dark, um, especially on the Game Boy Advance, not so much the Game Boy Color, but especially on the Game Boy Advance, uh, devs would intentionally tweak the colors um, a little bit more towards the, the oversaturated side so that when represented by this terrible screen, they appeared a little bit more accurate to what they would um, intend for things to look like. Whereas this screen has none of those downsides and can represent colors exactly as it's told. Um, 
So because devs would intentionally oversaturate colors and because these screens are capable of displaying that, a lot of games look a little bit oversaturated. Um, this is especially true with this. I, it's, it, it certainly looks very green. But it's fine. I mean, it's playing fine. I don't, I don't know that there's any issues. I'm, I'm thoroughly surprised by that and actually impressed. Uh, I'm gonna just start the same exact game. <sighs> okay. What I wanted was Pokemon Silver. because I wanted to pull that up alongside uh, this bad boy. So on the right here, I've got a console modified with a BlackBerry Q10, or excuse me, a Q5, I'm already getting them backwards, Q5 screen. Uh, but I'm also running the crystal clear ROM hack and I have no way of getting from this town to the town that this console is going to be in. Uh, but I think we can do the opposite. Yeah. So the reason I wanted to bring up this one specifically is because I wanted to show that while not exactly the best example, because these are technically two completely different games, um, the one on the right has color correction. So it's, it's subtle, but it is different. Um, of course, this one is implemented by the game itself because this is a ROM hack and the author knows that people are going to be running it on, uh, different hardware compared to stock, whereas this is just the stock game and that's just what all Game Boys did back when this was made in 1998 or whatever. Um, but I don't know, just a comparison. I can see with them side by side, it's really not that different. This one is certainly more blown out than that one is, but it's not, it's not bad, I think. It's just different. But then of course, th these are two, completely different maps, so I don't know if it's um, directly comparable. You can see even the size of that building is different. But, I don't know. Just thought it was worth the, uh, worth noting. Um, I think that's about all I've got. I don't know if I have much else to mention. Um, seems pretty good. One of the things I was worried about going into this was uh, that power usage was going to be absolutely abysmal, but quite frankly, it seems fine. Um, in fact, better than some of the previous kits, which is... <laughs> that That's two thumbs up right there. Um, like, not only is it better than the Q5 kits before it, it's better than their last drop-in kit, which was egregiously over budget, I think, even then. Um, so this, I, I'm all for this. This is nice. I like this. I think, uh, it would be nice if they could add that color desaturation that I've been asking for. Um, but instead we still have these silly color filters that I don't know that anyone actually uses. I like the, uh, touchscreen controls. I, I'm a diehard for my button controls, but... The touchscreen so far is working totally fine, and I just, I don't know, it's better than the alternative. It's better than those errant touch sensors that worked sometimes, and then you'd set the console down, and then they never work properly again. You know, stuff like that. I like it. It's good. I think there's a little bit of room for improvement, but so far, I don't see anything that concerns me. I don't see anything I dislike. Um... Time will tell, of course. Uh, Burnin was... Uh, <laughs> this era of OLED screens is what kind of 
spread all the burn-in rumors for OLED screens. Um, I don't know. Like I said, you can look up Q10 reviews. You'll get reviews for that screen. You know, do a Google search of Q10 burn-in. Maybe that'll be enlightening for something like this. Who knows? Um, but yeah, my concerns still are burn-in over time. Um, I will be trying to test that. In fact, after this video, I plan on fixing the buttons and then getting this thing set up with a static image on the screen. We'll see how long it takes to burn in. Screw it, why not? Um, and uh, I'll either update this video or throw a, well, it's not gonna burn in by the time I have this video published, so that's just not happening. I'll throw a, um, a link in the description and I'll probably pin a comment with whatever happens to that experiment. Uh, the game, the tentative plan is to just set a static image on the screen, turn the thing on and leave it alone and check on it periodically. Um, you know, first every few hours, then every few days and then so on to see when it starts burning in and we'll go from there, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I'm just going to do like a Twitter post or a full video or anything. I don't know. That, that depends entirely upon the results. Um, so we'll see. But otherwise, you know what? I'm impressed. I like what I see so far. It's pretty good. Um, oh, one more thing I wanted to test, because I know this gets touted a lot, but I'm just unsure if it's actually properly implemented. Uh, but one of the things, one of the other things that OLED is so commonly um, praised for its ability is perfect blacks. So what that means is since each pixel illuminates it is its own illumination. Um, anytime something on the screen is black, ergo no illumination, the entire pixel inside the screen just shuts off. Um, so, notably there's no light bleed, um, but also whenever there's black on screen, it should just be off. This is a terrible example because nothing in this game is black. Everything is like dark gray. Uh, but I'll find something. I think what was the popular one like Metroid 2 or something like that. Um, oh, that is a flash card. I could just use that. I don't know. Let me try that. Ugh. We're going to be here all day. Never mind. I'll just have to test that later. Um, I will test that when I'm taking the micros microscope pictures. Um, cause it'll be real easy to tell. Uh, but also I gotta get those, gotta get them buttons fixed so I can actually use this thing. I cut those membranes too short. That's on me, but I'll fix that. Otherwise, I'm, I'm, I'm into the look, right? I think those buttons were a solid choice. I think everything's turning out pretty good so far. Um, oh, one last thing before I go. I don't recall if I mentioned this already, so I'm gonna mention it again. Um, but even though this is not a funny playing kit, not a funny playing kit, we are using funny playing shells for it, um, because they are drop-in. If you want to use an OEM shell, you're going to have a bad time. So use the funny playing shell. It's just so much easier, because otherwise you got to mill out this entire section on the inside and make sure there's enough clearance for the, the, the screen itself. And it's just not a fun time if you're doing it by hand, and if you have the machine tools to do it, well, it's still not a fun time. Um, so it's easier to just buy one that already works and fits properly. And you saw it just, just, it just went together. I didn't have to, I didn't have to customize it or do any of that nonsense. And I got a cool UV printed one. Anyway, um, I will go ahead and throw some links to this stuff down in the description. Um, I, also have a link to my site down in the description, which has a link to that power usage spreadsheet that I have mentioned several times before. Um, as of this time right now, um, I don't know, it's like March 18th or something. I haven't updated it with this kit. I haven't updated it with the past few kits. Um, there hasn't really been anything new in my defense, so there hasn't really been any reason to update it, but I will go ahead and update it for this kit and do a quick skim of uh, anything that I did miss beforehand to update as well. 
I don't, I, I mentioned it, but I don't think I added that drop-in kit yet either, but that's a topic for something else. Um, this is that. I'm, I'm into it. I, I expected to have more complaints. I genuinely expected to have complaints and not even, like, I, I, I didn't want something to be wrong. They've just gotten it wrong more often than they've gotten it right the first try. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's something I totally missed. Maybe there's some weird edge cases in some game like Custom Robo or something where it fails. Um, you know what? I didn't do my normal... Oh, but my start and select button are being fussy. I'll do some more testing off screen. If there's anything egregious, I'll update the video before I upload. But otherwise, um, thanks for watching. Links in the description. Um, yeah, I've, I'm into it. It's pretty good. I'm, I'm excited for the other vendors that are also working on OLED because there are two of them that I knew of. And then this kit dropped like out of nowhere. So <laughs> maybe they're still working on OLED. I mean, they probably got the screens already be ashamed to to not uh i don't know be interesting be interesting when we get the uh game boy advance oled kits in too until next time hey look it's me again got a quick update got the buttons fixed it was exactly what i said it was i just had to trim more off the membranes and now it's working uh but first of all i had to adjust my positioning of the screen um I don't remember what the default was, but I'm now on 42 and 7 because that actually fits properly. Otherwise, it was cut off to the side, uh, but now everything looks good. Um, I wanted to pull up the 240p test sheet on here. Um, I've totally forgotten the reason now. Uh, oh, an hour call. Because I can set this to a gray screen and then we can use this for testing burn in later so I just wanted to show that as I've gotten the screen there is zero burn in so far um, but we'll see how that continues throughout the life of this thing and yes I've gotten my buttons working totally fine um, I already went over that anyway I did the uh, math on the power usage because I, I was thinking about it and I was curious and um, stock batteries are about 2,500 milliamp hours especially the nickel metal hydrides this is not how it works the power consumption is not linear and it is not 100% efficient that's just not how it works but for estimation purposes and of course, you know, it's going to depend on the game, brightness level, what specifically you're doing in the game, if you're playing on a flash card or an original card, whatever. Let's say you have Pokemon Silver. You have an original cart. You're playing on your original unmodified Game Boy. Not this one, but we'll pretend this one's unmodified. You know, you've got your original screen. So we can calculate the wattage that the console is pulling, and we can calculate the power that the console is pulling. I'm going to use some back of the math estimations using just the milliamp hour numbers because that just makes the math so much easier. And really when you actually do the thing, it works out close enough anyway that it doesn't matter. So let's say we have our 2,500 milliamp hour batteries, I rounded up mind you, um, and our console is using about 100 milliamp hours or excuse me, about 100 milliamps at the 2.4 volts that I measured it earlier. Um, this console was about 67 if I recall correctly, but doesn't matter. 100 milliamp hours, excuse me, 100 milliamps out of 2,500 2, milliamp hour batteries. Whoo, sorry, getting there. It's, it's been a day. Let me, uh, let me just get the calculator out for this. Make it a little bit easier on both of us here. You can see the numbers. Oh, come on. You know you want to. There we go. Just had to turn a light on for that. All right. So we have 2,500 milliamp hour batteries divided by 100 milliamps is 
what do you know, about 25 hours. So that is where I've gotten my um, stock guesstimates of a Game Boy Color's battery life. Um, that is, of course, assuming you have a completely unmodified Game Boy, you're using, you know, nickel metal hydride batteries, you're using original games, etc. Maximum possible, 25 hours. Probably getting less, but 25 wouldn't be unreasonable. Now, I have measured uh, the same thing. Uh, we'll clear this up. We got 2,500 milliamp hour batteries, and let's say we're using a Q5 backlight kit in there, which, oops, which maxes out at what I think I said, 370 milliamps. That gives us a number of 6.75. So assuming my napkin math here is accurate, that should mean I get about 6.75 hours out of a Q5 backlit Game Boy. I don't know. That, that makes sense to me because I've run battery tests and gotten about 13 hours, but I would have also been running at a much lower brightness level. I wouldn't have had it maxed out. Um, so with a Q5, you know, if I can get 13 hours of battery life out of that, we can calculate exactly how much power it was using. With 2,500 milliamp hour batteries divided by 13, we get about 192 milliamps, which makes sense for power usage. So we can also use that to guesstimate with this thing, you know, on 2,500 milliamp hour batteries. Um, I know on the bare minimum, what was it using? 214, I think it was. I don't have to think. I'm, I'm looking over and I can see it on my other screen there. Um, what? 11.68. So we'll get probably around 12 hours of battery life guesstimate um, on the minimum side. And then on the max, uh, I said it went up to 256. Well, I know that's going to be around 10. Um, 9.76. So, I guesstimate, with a fresh pair of batteries and a normal game, not a flash card, but a normal game, you'll have no problem getting, you know, about 12 hours out of this thing. I think that is more than reasonable, um, especially if you play on lower brightness settings. Um, I don't know. I think, I think that's pretty good. Um, I'll have to... This, this is bad. This is a cheat code that will not give you an accurate number. But um, even if you were to calculate out the wattage, do it that way, and then add in your, you know, 80% power usage efficiency, give or take, um, ballpark estimate, you'll, you'll still end up in about the same number. And you'll only be able to figure out how much battery life you'll get out of your console, since Every single one is going to be different um, by just measuring how long it takes until it's depleted. It is what it is. But you can still guesstimate with these numbers. But anyway, I don't know. I just wanted to go over that real quick. And I didn't really feel comfortable leaving the video on that um, terrible note of me not having working start and select buttons. Uh, so, ta-da! It's working. Uh, I think I also wanted to show off. Mm, where is it? it? Helps if I read, huh? We can do color tests. Here we can see our black levels. I can see looking at this that the screen is not off where that is black, but I don't think that's black. That looks more like black. Never mind. So this one will be interesting to put under the microscope to get some real good pictures of. But I just wanted to show that off in the video in case you want some, some quick feedback there. I don't know. Still looks pretty good. I, I, I still agree with my initial assessment. This is... I, I'm waiting to figure out what's wrong with it. <laughs> Like, I'm just so used to all of their kits having something, some egregious issue. And there's just been nothing yet. It's impressive. I 
I don't know, maybe we'll find out on, on the full screen stripes test that certain patterns cause the backlight to do, or the, the screen to do weird things. I don't know, I guess it is off. Fascinating. Okay. I don't know why I'm playing with that. That's not going to tell us anything. This thing doesn't have backlight zones. This test doesn't really apply. Okay. Anyway. Okay. That's all I've got. Um, I'll go splice this together and uh, upload now. I just wanted to go on that rant. Um, I don't know. I just... I, I, I wanted to give you guys the means to calculate your own battery usage. Uh, and of course, if you have a power supply, you can get an exact number just by plugging your Game Boy in and seeing exactly how much power it's drawing. Um, but if you don't have a power supply, you're really not missing out on much because the most accurate way is, again, to just measure it start to finish and see what happens. Um, and of course, you'll have to do that multiple times because there's, there's outliers. Fun. Fun how data works. But anyway, yeah, that's all I've got. Um, thanks for watching. Peace.